Okay, new bike. Um, bought this off eBay for, uh, what was it, tenner, something like that. Um, but I just wanted to, I liked the rear disc and I thought, you know what, I'll make myself a cyclocross bike. So I think it's a good size for me. Um, it's basically just a, an old Peugeot. Um, you can see there, it's a Concept 18. It has chrome-molly, chrome, chrome, chrome-molly tubing. Um, they're actually 700C wheels, which is nice. So I can put some fat tires on it. Um, it's got the Shimano Exage Country group set, uh, which I think is what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's meant to be three times six, but unfortunately, the third group, third chain ring is missing, and also. The bottom bracket is, well, it's not completely seized, but it is horrible in there. Um, what else? We've got some, what are these called? V brakes, just can cantilever. Cantilever brakes. Got a nice Avoussi, Avoussi saddle, which I don't know, might be able to clean up some flat bars, some trigger shifters on, and yeah that's about it. What group set have we got? I mean what headset? I don't know, it doesn't say. Um, but yeah, what the plan is, I'm going to take these bars off, put some drop bars on. I've already got an 8 speed Shimano group set to go on it. Hopefully it will fix, I haven't actually checked the threading of the button bracket yet. Um, and yeah, respray it. If I check the threading of the headset, if it's 24 and I can't 24 threads per inch and I can't clean this up because it's quite rusty, I might just change it. Uh, but it depends on the threading of the steerer and the size of the crown because French did do some funky sizes especially in the 70s, so I'll we'll have to check that. Um, the bike is actually... Um, am I going to be able to... Let me just put this down for a second. Uh, can we see on there? I don't think I can see. You can kind of see there. So the bike is a uh, 1998, so that means I'm as old as the bike. Um, so yeah, that is one project that I've got coming up. Apparently, it was actually made in Canada. Doo -doo -doo. Made in Canada. So I'm going to try and get these stickers replicated as well. I'm going to do like a cool logo on there. But that is one project that's coming up, so now I'm just going to strip it down and see what size all the parts are. It actually came off quite quite easy actually, quite well. Um, these weren't seized on or anything so they came straight off with a press. I mean that's just an iron key and that came straight off. Obviously I soaked this before and it came off well. Um, Good news is, good news is that, let's go inside, the headset, which is here-ish, headset, I've measured it, and it's 24 threads per inch, which means I can use a modern one on there, and uh, 
replace it pretty easy because this is quite rusty and I want this bike to be nice. I've also found out that after I took the axle out, which was in this condition, everything in there is horrible and dirty and rusty and seized and you can't see it because this camera's awful. But you can see inside the um, button bracket it was just thick with dirt and gunk and rust. I'm going to have to clean it out in there but luckily measured the shell and that's 68mm. Measured the threads, 24 threads per inch and it's got the same threading as a normal British so in here I have a Shimano sealed uh, cartridge uh, button bracket to go on. I have some 8-speed shifters, STR shifters. I have the group zip to match and I have the cranks to match. Um, I've got the seat post which I've measured so I might replace that. Battle cage, brakes. Um, I think that's the only thing that I'm keeping off the original bike, the brakes and the seat post. Um, but the frame's actually really light. Um, so, yeah, that's a nice light frame. I'm gonna give it powder coated, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> I'm gonna get the frame powder coated, but I'm gonna see if I can. I think these actually sealed in under the lacquer, these transfers, so they're not going to come off. I'm going to see if I can get some remade. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. So I've just dug the uh, wheels out for the Peugeot, um, and I don't know what the, well, I do know what he was thinking. The previous owner had covered all of this front rim in all of that black tape. So I've just had to spend ages peeling it off. But to be fair to him, it's protected the rim. Um, as you can see, because it's so freaking bright. There we go, that's about it. So it's protected the rim. Um, I've got Vineman alloy rims on this bike with, what's the hubs? Malliard hubs. There you go, Malliard hubs or Milard, however you pronounce it. So, with these, got new tyres to go on. Um, I'm going to strip down the hubs, clean them up and re-grease them. For the front, for the rear, again, obviously got new tyres, but they've got the disc on. So what I'm going to do here, uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, we've got a six speed, uh, free wheel, free wheel, yep. Um, and what I'm going to do is take that off, and hopefully, I've got an 8 speed to go with the 8 speed STI shifters I've got, so hopefully that fits on here. I'm not sure about the spacing, haven't tried it, haven't measured it. I'm just playing it by ear. Uh, disc will stay, but I want to put a design on there. Uh, but the rim looks in good condition. I can't tell what it says there. Can you? Rigida. I've got a rigid, rigida rims on the rear. But, yep, we're going to do that now. Okay, firstly, before I uh, go ahead and strip this down, this is the lock nut off the top. This is the lock nut. There's only half of it there. So we've got to replace that. But also, the axle, don't know if you can tell on video, but it's bent. Not the axle, sorry. Quick release. Quick release is bent. So that's going to have to get replaced as well. Okay, back to putting my music on.
Okay, um, so that's all greased up. Just need to find the lock nut for that side. The threads are pretty damaged, but it'll be all right. Um, axle straight, just the quick release isn't, so. Um, yeah, that's greased up. Do exactly the same to the other side and catch you in a bit. <laughs> the frame's back from the powder coat, and it looks amazing. Um, oh god, I really like this bike now. This is going to be so hard to see in this light. Um, basically, the bike, as you probably know, probably saw, came in a gloss black. But when I got to the powder coaters and after chatting to the guys there, you know, I've been quite a few times now. Um, I saw the metallic black and normally it costs extra, but it threw it in for me for the same price. So my bike is now metallic black, which is awesome. Um, what they also did for me as well is they powder coated the original what do you call this? bottle cage <laughs> they powder coated the original bottle cage yellow again so that's nicely contrasting um, I got that done as well because I've got yellow cables yellow gear cables and brake cables to go on the bike because that's what it came with originally uh, so yeah that'll all be nice and contrasting um, what I've got here Oh, that's really bright. What I've got here is a set of original transfers. So I'm going to put those on. These are the ones that I couldn't find. So it came with, uh, what's this say, Cosmic Trail um, stickers. You've got the original bike shop sticker there that sold it, Northampton. Um, I'll check Google Maps, it doesn't exist anymore, it's now a cleaners or something? can't remember. Um, couldn't find the original Chrome Molloy 4130 sticker and just a Peugeot Cycles standard sticker. But I'm going to get these ones stuck on. Um, I'm not sure so what sort of quality they are because they're from eBay in a different shop than I normally get them from. So we'll see how they go. I'll probably lacquer them after as well to give them a bit of protection. Um, and then I can start assembling the bike, which I'm really looking forward to. You'll also see that I've got here is the rear wheel, which I cannot wait to get on. I think it would look awesome. I'm just waiting to get a longer axle for the hub, but I've probably said that in a different update. Um, so yeah, cool. Stickers on, decals on, transfers on, whatever you want to call them. We're going to do that now. Okay, new axle arrived. For, well, but I've got bought two. So I've bought two new axles um, to try out for this wheel. Um, I bought a 140mm and a 145mm so that gives a overlock nut diameter overlock, overlock nut dimension of what 130 135 depending on which axle I've gone for the bigger one so I've got uh, got to try and fit 10mm extra in the frame it shouldn't be too bad, hopefully. I might have to cold set it, um, aka bend it. But what I've got to do now, because I've gone so much bigger, is where is it? There. So, what I've got to do now is redish the wheel. Um, you can't really see from that angle. There. So because I've extended the, the axle um, by 10mm, um, especially on this drive side, I haven't done it 5mm each side because I needed the space purely on the drive side, I'm going to have to redish the wheel. 
I've set this marker to where it should be central so I've got a finger's width roughly to make out so I'm gonna have to what I'm hoping to do is just sort of tension the spokes on this side on the drive side and loosen the spokes on the non-drive side and hopefully that will bring the rim across enough but if it doesn't I'm going to have to take all the spokes out on this side every one of them and put some shorter spokes in which is gonna suck if I have to do that okay so I um, put the stickers on put the decals on brought the frame into work with the forks as well and decided to coat it in some lacquer to protect it um, so it's been in there drying in some good conditions for I don't know what four days now and it's looking pretty good there's a bit of discoloration on the bottom bracket shell here um, underneath haven't seen it anywhere else but it looks good so far I think I'm just gonna take it off and then see how it is but yeah happy with that oh and in case you're wondering I spend all my time mainly right here so this is what I use to polish up all the parts this wheel here um, it's a cloth wheel and I just use a couple of compounds on that just to get the chrome and or alloy polished up depending on which bike it is um, and it works well once you've cleaned up the bike a bit to start with all the parts that will finish it off nicely so back in the garage now um, headsets installed I could have gone and got myself a nice brand new headset because this one does have a bit of hang on let me just grab the top this one does have a bit of damage on it a bit of corrosion um, on the top lock ring here and also on the bottom cup around, but I've put it around the back so that does have some corrosion on it but I've decided to use it because you know don't want to throw it away and it's cheap and it doesn't look too bad actually it polished up quite nice um, and if you didn't know this is how I install the press the cups back into the head tube oh it's so cold today um, all I use is a bit of threaded rod I've got a dome nut on one end with a big washer adjustable nut on the other end with another washer and whenever I need to flip it around just take the dome nut off and put it in a new one just wind them in together just watch the way you're doing it because sometimes it does go in wonky so but yeah it works saves you having to buy an expensive tool and that's how I press the cups in for the headset and also for the where's it gone I've lost it I've lost it oh there it is for the forks which are here to get the bottom race back on all I use is this piece of aluminium um, which I actually found it was just an adapter um, so it fits nicely over the tube like that with very little play and then it slides down to the bottom and then to save you damaging the race here I just hit the top of that gently and it works that race back on no problem there now the headset's on um, what I like to do before I put the bars in is just run a little bit of grease around the inside of here just the inside of the tube so that when you put the stem in it pulls the grease down and hopefully it should stop some season in the future but on the subject of stems and bars that's what I've gone for um, I'm using the 
GT bars that came with my British Eagle, my main bike, when I got that, and I didn't like the shape of them, so I, um, I've actually got some different bars on that bike at the moment because it suits me better, but I think they'll work well here, um, especially with the aero indents on the side. They were a bit scratched on top here, so they're a bit scratched, but I've tried to polish them up as best I can. Um, that was a mistake I made, trying to fit it, the bars into a smaller stem, so don't do that. Um, as for stem wise, I've gone for a 3T, T, 3T stem as well. Um, it's kind of rough on the head tube, the bit that goes into the head tube, it's kind of rough there. It's 75mm because I'm not tall so I don't have a long reach and I think they'll work nicely as a cyclocross bike. So I'm going to put those in now and then start adding all the components. Next up is the seat post. Um, this is still the original one. So you can see after even after I sanded it down lightly and polished it up. I mean the polish has come back beautifully on it. But you've still got all those nice deep scratches especially in the back where I don't know maybe it got seized before and then the previous owner tried to work it out and ended up scratching it all but I actually just noticed there's a there's a little grub screw at the top there so I could potentially change the seat post out if I needed to because that little grub screw should undo and take the top out um, I've got the original saddle on it still. I'm probably going to change this out pretty soon because it's a bit horrible. Um, so yeah, it's an, apparently quite a rare saddle, but it's a bit rough. So I'm going to change that. I reckon old seat definitely needs to be changed. I am not having that on the fancy looking bike now. Um, so yeah, what I've done now is put the group set on. I've got a three times eight STI shifters um, working down the bike. I've put the freshly powder coated bottle cage back on and I've used some stainless bolts to give it a bit of extra bling. At the bottom bracket I've got this Shimano group set, well the whole thing Shimano, but a Shimano triple chain ring, um, it's actually a square taper uh, bottom bracket cartridge, so that's gone in there instead of it was open before. We've got the derailleur on the back which has gone on nicely. Unfortunately the derailleur on the front is a Braze on mounted, so it would be mounted off a bracket that comes off the tube. So I need to get a clamp for that, the same as I did for my other bike, which I did not check to start with. So, whoops! Um, and the other whoops moment is the brakes. Now, although I bunged up these holes, let me zoom in. Although I bunged up the holes here to stop any powder coating or shit going in the holes, what I didn't do was tape up the outside. So when you try and slide the uh, brake onto the the mountain, it does not want to go on. It is too tight. So I'm going to have to clean up all of that around there, both sides, so it can slide on again. And even if it did get it on with the powder coating on, it would not turn, it would be too stiff. So that's a whoops moment there. Um, I remember not to make that same mistake next time. I'll tell you what, this wheel for the Peugeot has caused me so much grief. Um, because I've had to redish the wheel so much that it's practically over this flange. 
I don't know, I was just, well, with another spacer on the end, should I say, I did put all the spacers on the drive side. Um, so I was trying to dish it so far over that the spokes on the drive side was super, 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 super tense, taut. And on the non-drive side, I was just getting nothing in them. I, I couldn't tension them because if I did, it would pull the rim back over to the other side. So I had a thought. I thought, what if I remove a spacer from the drive side, will and put it on the non-drive side, will it still fit in the bike with the gears on? And it does. So with that in mind, I recalculated the spokes. It changed them very, very slightly, like a fraction a mil, maybe fractions of a mil. But it actually helped with the tensioning. I've got it sorted now. Um, there's still slightly less tension on the non-drive side, but it's usable. It's not going to collapse on me. So I think I'm done with that. I've just got to restack these so that they're even on both sides now. Um, and then just grind off some of these spokes that are sticking out. And then I'm done. I can put the dish back on and we can get it back on the bike. Thought I'd come inside for this next bit. Um, I can't actually remember where I left off, but I've got the rear wheel built. Um, it actually needed to go, I've actually aligned it slightly too much towards the drive side for some reason, which I don't quite know why unless my stand's out of alignment, but um, if anything I just need to tighten the non-drive side to pull the rim back over slightly, back over that way. Um, derailleur's arm, the doohickey cable for the rear derailleur's arm. I've put the chain on um, and just hung the front derailleur over because what I needed was this. Um, a, a clamp to change it from a braze on to a clamp on. Uh, brakes are all in place now, so they're all nicely done. Got me some yellow cable going all the way around. We've got the handlebars and brake levers aligned where I want them. Um, I just need to fit now the, so I need to put the band on from the front derailleur fit the cable for the front derailleur and then just pretty much fit the bar tape and I think that is it. Bar tape wise I'm not sure what to do at the moment. Um, where is it here? Okay. I mean the colours on the logo are pink, blue, yellow and white. Everyone knows you don't have white bar tape because that is just asking for a whole world of dirt. Yellow was the colour for the cables on the original bike, so I've used it there. That leaves me with blue and pink. So I bought a blue and pink bar tape. Now, I don't know whether to do one side blue, one side pink, all blue, all pink, or maybe the top half's pink and the bottom half's blue. Um, I'm gonna have a play around and then see what it comes out like. Oh, and lastly, saddle. Um, that's the original saddle, which is kind of nasty looking. Um, but I have bought this charge saddle. If I want to swap over, I probably will swap over at some point because I do like these charge saddles. They're cheap and to me they're comfy. I use them on my daily bike all the time. Okay, so yeah, that's next. I'm just going to get this quickly together, test it out, and then probably go for a ride tomorrow morning. First ride out. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's all together now. I've had my first ride out. I'm actually on top of a hill right now in the cold. Um, so yeah, i got the front derailleur on. The band is actually for... I think it's a 31.6 
mill tube and I've got 28.7 something like that maybe um, so I mean I've just you can buy a Shimano adapter but it's like 20 quid just for a bit of sticky back plastic and foam sticky back tape and foam so I've um, just cut some inner tube up and squeezed it between the back of there and that worked fine um, what else oh yeah the one thing that I would have added if I thought about it see the rear ooh. you see the rear derailleur has the adjustment screw on it for the cable tension just there the front derailleur doesn't have that um, it's normally it's normally here oh god the focus is terrible it's normally here on the down tube um, but these are just cable guides for the old style I guess because it would have had it originally in the levers here um, I could also add it on there but I didn't quite think about that so I put all the cables on tried to adjust the tension on the front derailleur and struggled because I don't have any fine tuning so it does work but it's a bit slow sometimes so in future if it doesn't get any better I'm going to add some inline adjusters I've also gone with the sort of two-tone tape make that a bit darker because the design on the logo is pink, blue, yellow, white gone yellow cabling gone pink and blue on the uh, tape and that's it that's the bike done oh I've changed the saddle there you go that's the bike done um, rode it out today it's bumpy <laughs> the handlebar slipped on the first bump and I pulled up my road but I fixed that um, but yeah there it is spent what 290 quid on that I think bike and all the parts so it's not been too bad I don't think you could buy something like this in the shops for 290 quid so I'm happy with that I'm just gonna ride it around now as a cyclocross bike I've got it filthy already and that's gonna be stored in the house for now because I can't get it in the garage great but yeah, um, hope you've enjoyed this little builder. I think it's turned into a absolutely beautiful bike. Hope you do too. Um, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and leave a comment if you feel like it. Positive or negative, I don't really mind. Um, more to come, so keep an eye out and thanks for watching.